If you've been told that you have hip impingement or femoral acetabular impingement and also gluteal tendinopathy, then this video is one you need to watch. I want to give a quick shout out to Alex King and Aaron Oli, two commenters here on YouTube who have been really grateful for content that we've put out about your hips. Thank you very much for commenting and for being supporters of the channel. So the first thing I want you to realize is when you're thinking about orthopedic conventional medical diagnoses, you've got to remember that these things tend to be treatment driven and that treatments are driven by money. So if you haven't already, you need to think about the FAI diagnosis very clearly and realize that it's one, a very new diagnosis with basically very little research to back up the claims and two, that it's a new treatment protocol with surgery that has very little evidence to show that it's particularly effective and it's never been compared against a placebo. Finally, item three is that studies that are starting to compare surgery versus physical therapy have shown that they're not that different and that's already with physical therapy at a disadvantage. Why do I say that? It's because physical therapy protocols have been driven by really, really, really poor research standards that actually make me cry when I look at them. My doctor sent me to it for a month of physical therapy. At my f initial visit to the therapist, she told me that uh, what I needed to do was resign myself to the fact that I wasn't going to walk anymore, that walking was over. And it was sort of uh, more than a diagnosis, it was like a sentence. A lot of the physical therapy protocols that exist for hip impingement are not any good and are laughably bad when you realize that they're only working the hips in these very tiny ranges of motion and never actively restore muscle tone, function, balance to the adductors, to the hamstrings, to the quads, to any of these muscles and just waste people's time with these little rudimentary movements where they just kind of swing their hip around. So even comparing surgery to these crappy physical therapy protocols, surgery doesn't even do that well. So keep those things in mind. So to recap, if you have the hip impingement diagnosis, don't let that drive your decision-making process. You need to be thinking about your muscles. And if you've got gluteal tendinopathy, don't get super scared by that label. The label means nothing. It means you still need to work on your muscles. So let me show you an exercise that's gonna help you work on some of these muscles. And if you find that you need to do something to help stretch out your outer hips, make sure to check out a previous video that I'll link to down in the description box that helps you stretch out your stiff outer hips. To do this exercise, lie down on a cushioned surface so it doesn't hurt the bottom hip. You can use a pillow or just your arm under your head. The first position you're going to start in is with your hips flexed to about 90 degrees. You're going to straighten the top leg and keep the knee and foot pointing a little bit down towards the floor. You're going to lift the leg up towards the ceiling without deviating up towards your face or down towards your other foot. You're trying to get just clean abduction while maintaining that slight internal rotation. You should feel this in the outer hip and a little more behind the greater trochanter of your femur. As you do this, you wanna make sure that your abs stay engaged, that your pelvis does not rock into anterior tilt, and that your butt doesn't roll to try to cheat the motion. The entire motion should come from the leg moving relative to the pelvis. The second position in this exercise is to take the top leg into extension so that it's lined up as close as you can get it with the line of your torso. Keep that slight internal rotation and lift up towards the ceiling and back down. You should feel this a little bit more towards the front of the outer hip. Make sure to go slow and controlled 
and pause a little bit at the top to make sure you can feel the right muscles firing. The longer you hold it, the more likely it is you're going to feel the right muscles and the more tiring the exercise gets. When you feel like you've mastered these two positions, you can also look at intermediate angles, still maintaining that internal rotation of the leg and moving up. If and when you need to make this exercise more challenging, you can use an ankle weight, put it somewhere on your leg where it'll stay, maintain all the same rules, and go through the motion. So when you start introducing weight, keep that in mind. You can make the same weight feel a little bit heavier the further away you move it from the hip joint. When you first start doing this exercise, I just do it once a day. Do it two sets on each side. If you have a weaker side, which is highly likely, do an extra set for that weaker side to help it catch up. So if you're doing two sets on your right and your left side is weaker, then you'll do a third set on that side. In terms of reps, I would do them slow and controlled and start off with five. If that seems really easy, go to 10. If that's still really easy, go to 15. If that's still really easy, you're one of those people who actually will probably need to put an ankle weight so that it starts to feel like a challenge and so that you feel the right muscles kicking in. If you find it challenging without the ankle weight, don't jump into that first thing. Make sure you take your time to get control of the right muscles and then you can add the ankle weight later. Again, if you find that you do this exercise and your hips start to get stiffer and you find that your outer hips just feel really tight and, and congested, then make sure you check out the video I'm linking down below that'll show you how to stretch out your outer hips. If you've been given the hip impingement diagnosis, the femoral acetabular impingement diagnosis, make sure to check out the FAI Fix at thefaifix.com. Let me know what you think of this exercise in the comment section and how it felt for you. If you like this video, be sure to click like and share it with somebody you know who needs stronger outer hips for their alleged gluteal tendinopathy. Subscribe to the channel, and as always, I hope you remember that pain sucks. Life shouldn't.